Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures. Today we're going to talk about a wide variety of different use cases for artificial intelligence in cybersecurity startups that we've been seeing at Gula Tech Adventures. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm Ron Gula. I'm the president of Gula Tech Adventures. We invest in cybersecurity startups with some AI in them. We also do cybersecurity philanthropy, and we try to raise public awareness with our YouTube channel as well as uh, public speaking, talking about uh, the risks and opportunities of cybersecurity and artif artificial intelligence. We've currently invested about 35 different uh, cybersecurity startups, and we're going to talk about that. So, so today, what I see with artificial intelligence use cases is, is four different use cases. One, you're going to add some sort of artificial intelligence into an existing cybersecurity product. That's great. We'll talk about that. Second, we're going to talk about how with these new AI applications that are being created, you're almost going to need an artificial intelligence to really see who has access to this data in the first place. Now, third, there's a lot of people working on AI provability. Provability AI is a huge, big thing. We think it's going to be something that's uh, that's going to happen. Uh, we'll talk about that. And then lastly, we'll talk about actual AI operations company, including AI security. All right, so the first use case I talked about was how if you have a company that's doing some sort of cyber function, does adding AI to it, does that improve the product? And in general, I'm gonna say yes, not only just for cybersecurity, but for all types of products. And the reason is this, most cybersecurity products, most products in general have, you know, 100% 100, 100 of the features that they ship in these products almost never get used 100% of the time by the customers. Now, when I ran Tenable Network Security, we had these amazing features. We, I would do podcasts and blogs on these new features. And I would tell you the efficacy of getting everybody to use all those features was not as high. And it's not, wasn't a Tenable issue. Every founder I've ever talked to says, nobody uses 100% of the product that they build. Now with AI, when you add AI to this, it kind of changes things. One of the reasons people don't use all the features of these products is because you have to learn them and there's many, many different products. Most of the time you buy a product and put in a place for one, maybe two use cases. Most product CEOs tend to think that they have 10 use cases and you know maybe the customers aren't using them for everything like that. So AI, adding that to a product, really can solve and broaden uh, a lot more use cases that are out there. Now, in the current portfolio, I'm wearing the, the Halcyon uh, uh, swag today. Halcyon is a uh, endpoint company that uses artificial intelligence to detect and stop ransomware. Their efficacy is a lot better than the traditional EDRs at detection, detecting ransomware because they've focused on that, right? So that's a use case that's easy to understand. We have another company called uh, Automox. Automox is a patching company and they added chat GPT into their stack such that if you wanted to run a script to make a configuration change, chat GPT can help you write in the user interface of, uh, of Automox. Polarity has done something similar as well. Polarity is one of our portfolio companies that makes the uh, operating a SOC, make, making a SOC analyst job a lot easier because as events come into whatever SOAR or SIM that they're using, Polarity is already watching that and doing a wide variety of threat searches and basically launching searches in, uh, in chat GPT as well. And lastly, Conceal is a company that focus 100% on protecting users while they're browsing on the web. And they do this with an AI tool called Sherpa that uh, detects hostile websites and alerts the user as they're clicking on bad URLs in such a way that they're not gonna get fished, not gonna have some sort of malware delivered onto their desktop through the web browser. So that's just a couple different examples. In general, we're seeing a lot of companies add AI to existing cybersecurity products and calling it something new, something next gen. Yet to be seen, if, uh, if it's gonna transform the industry 100%, but it's definitely a use case that, that we're seeing across a lot of startups. Now, the second category I talked about was this concept of, of uh, access control based on artificial intelligence. And, and the way I describe this is as follows. If you have zero trust, if you're doing uh, access control and authorization to your applications, whether they're SaaS applications, a proprietary database, or even just like who can get to, get to email, when you add AI into that, it completely changes things because the AI is like an octopus. You're going to hook up an AI to all of those applications. So now if you've got rule-based access control, rule-based access control, 
such as the only the only the admins of the email system can do admins on email and only the admins of the Salesforce SaaS apps can only can only you know do that how does this change when you have a giant artificial intelligence system that's going to look at all this stuff and make recommendations how do you handle access control on that so there's a new set of products that we've been we've been pitched that are trying to do enterprise rights management some sort of uh, artificial intelligence of uh, uh, access control so you can only ask the AI certain questions. And this, of course, has a whole host of problems, right? We've seen prompt hacking. If, uh, you know, it's really hard to create an, an AI LLM and say, well, let Larry in accounting only ask financial questions. Like, what is that? What does that really mean? That's a lot different than only allowing Larry to log on to your ERP system and your financial you know, database that you have to do every quarter. So, so this is an area that's very, very interesting. Now, I used to think this was not a big problem, but as more and more applications are written in large enterprise that use an LLM, this is a big deal. Because currently, right now in 2024, most large enterprises, if they say they're using artificial intelligence, they're using older predictive statistical machine learning models where they have data sets and they train those data sets and they build applications to do predictions based on that. LLMs and generative AI kind of throws that all the way, right? You're going to dump as much data as you can into these things and you almost need an artificial intelligence system to translate the answers in such a way that you're not giving up that critical infrastructure. Now, Google Tech hasn't invested in a company like this. We're getting pitches like this. We want to see this market evolve. We think this is a real problem, but it is different than traditional zero trust and identity and access control. Now, the third area of AI cybersecurity stuff that we've been seeing as far as startups is provable AI. And this is where you want to audit your artificial intelligence applications the same way that you might audit a, a, a software that you've built from, uh, from scratch or software that you've bought and is hard to configure, like a SaaS system or an internal database, even an internal uh, messaging and knowledge base system. So we're seeing a lot of different tools out there that are looking for a couple different, uh, different ways at this problem. So the first thing is Drift. A lot of organizations who use AI for prediction, you want to make sure that you're not having some sort of negative feedback loops. The more you use the AI and the more you train it, that actually makes it make a bad prediction. And these bad predictions can be with vendors. They can be with homegrown AIs. They can be with homegrown uh, projects and so on. But we're seeing a whole bunch of tools that are using this to prove that the statistical based and the uh, sort of the machine learning based homegrown uh, AI applications are not being drifted into some bad area. And we have yet to see anybody who's pitched us on a way to audit LLMs. If you can audit OpenAI, if you can audit Claude AI, if you can audit some of these bigger LLMs, you've basically you know learned how to reverse engineer these um, these binary files that are gigabytes in size. And this is something we really haven't seen yet. Now, there's a lot of ways that we've talked on this channel about trying to reverse you know, the inputs and outputs of, of an LLM. In practice, we haven't seen anybody who can really do this. And the best way that we've seen so far is to get access to the, to the data that trains the LLM. Well, that's kind of an off the table sort of uh, problem for these third party LLMs that you have to go to when you're buying in the cloud. OpenAI is not going to let you reverse engineer their their you know their data and their algorithms and that sort of things even though perhaps maybe the New York Times would 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 like to get a look at that. The reality though is that if you have a homegrown LLM, you probably have the data to audit it and this is probably going to be part of your audit stack the same way you might be auditing an application for vulnerabilities, OWASP issues, Center for Internet Security, NIST cybersecurity framework issues, and so on. So we are seeing a lot of companies in this space that are trying to get into this audit space. But like I said, most of the focus today right now is on the earlier forms of AI, which is the statistical and the machine learning base. Now, Google Tech, we have not made an investment here. We are indirectly invested in Arthur AI. I think they're one of the leaders in this space, and but this is still a very, very young space, and uh, we do like uh, to see how this is unfolding. And I think this is going to be a big deal that anybody who does vulnerability and compliance auditing on a daily basis, they are going to be doing this in the future.
Now, the last area that we're going to talk about is this concept of AI security and AI operations. Now, this is different than access control. This is more on the DevOps side. Now, if you've already been through our, our industry, you know that we have DevOps, we have Sec DevOps. Now we're starting to get into AI operations, and we're starting to get pitches uh, from companies who are trying to add security to AI operations. Well, what, what does that mean? Well, if you're building your own AI, you're doing it with your own data. And a lot of these AI operations security companies that we've looked at have various types of controls for understanding the data that you have that you're training your AI. How do you understand a petabyte of comma separated files or that you have to do a wide variety of analytics on that? If you're going to add new data into that, where did the data come from? Are you going to keep track of where it came from? Do you have providence? Do you have the ability to, to regress and, and, and do certain tests there? There's a whole new field of data science that is going to basically say, if you're going to train your own LLM, you've got to show the work. You've got to show where the data comes from and then start doing the testing to make sure you're not having bias that you're not having bad answers, that there aren't, you're not adding security vulnerabilities on, on, on top of that. So again, we're starting to see companies in this space. And if you're doing this kind of work, the, uh, you know, it's, it's a very interesting dynamic for trying to keep things secure and keep things usable. One of the things that we've run into, and this is uh, relevant to one of our investments called Shard Security, is that working with large data sets, it's very hard to keep them encrypted all the time if you're sharing them and trying to do positive key control, right? If many, many people can just access your data and share it, it's it's really hard to kind of do that. So one of the things you can do is you can shard that data. You can put your petabytes of, or gigabytes of data on, online, not have it encrypted, but not have it in one form that can be easily gotten. This is also a problem because if you think about the encryption case, the people who are managing your data, even if it's encrypted, well, if you're worried about quantum cryptography and somebody stealing your data sets just because it happens to be encrypted with you know, AES-256 or something even more sophisticated than that, if you can't get an encrypted file, then you can't decrypt it. And uh, you know, sharding for these data sets is a great use case of that. But literally, as you start going down this AI ops route, Many of the things and the design patterns that we've seen in Sec DevOps and we've seen in uh, other types of container-based and cloud-based things kind of come into play. When does the LLM get trained? How do you test it? How do you put it out? How do you know that it's working? And then do you have any security vulnerabilities in that application? We are seeing this emerge as a separate product, a separate field. This is something different than what I would consider web security or something different than uh, you know the other types of vulnerability scanning that we've seen in this area. Well, so if you've watched this video and you're like, hey, I have a company that does that, how do you contact Gula Tech Adventures? It's real easy. We have investor at gula.tech. You can also connect with us on LinkedIn. You can even leave a like on this video and say, hey, I've got an idea for, uh, for a company in this space. We think this is unfolding. We think this is gonna be really good for the industry. But these are indeed new areas, and I thought it would be really interesting to share some of what we've been seeing at Gula Tech Adventures with our audience. So I'm Ron Gula. I hope you have a great day and enjoyed this video. Want to see more things like this? Give us a like. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on LinkedIn. Have a great day. 